Welcome to ReneeEnergy.com on YouTube, the hub for all things renewable energy and sustainability. Our channel is dedicated to bringing you the latest innovations and insights in green energy, including cutting-edge developments like green hydrogen. Whether you're a sustainability veteran or just beginning your journey, we have something for everyone. Join us on this channel to explore inspiring projects for a sustainable tomorrow. We bring you the latest in renewable energy, sustainability, and cutting-edge technologies. And don't forget, for more in-depth information and resources, visit our website and subscribe to our newsletter for the latest updates and exclusive content. Hey there, energy enthusiasts! Welcome to ReneeEnergy.com, your go-to source for all things renewable energy. Today, we're embarking on an exciting journey into the world of green hydrogen. In this series, we'll be exploring two groundbreaking methods of producing this clean energy source, biological fermentation and electrolysis. But don't worry if you're new to the hydrogen scene, we'll be starting from the very basics and working our way up. So buckle up and get ready to dive into the fascinating world of green hydrogen production. Let's kick things off with a quick introduction to hydrogen itself. Hydrogen is the lightest and most abundant element in the universe. It's a colorless, odorless, and tasteless gas that has been capturing the attention of scientists and energy experts for decades. But why is hydrogen so special? Well, it has the potential to revolutionize the way we power our world. When hydrogen is combusted or used in a fuel cell, it produces only water and heat as byproducts. That's right, no greenhouse gases, no air pollutants, just pure, clean energy. It's like a dream come true for those of us who are passionate about finding sustainable energy solutions. But here's the catch, not all hydrogen is created equal. You see, hydrogen can be produced from a variety of sources, including natural gas, coal, and even water. However, not all of these methods are environmentally friendly. In fact, some of them can generate significant amounts of greenhouse gases, which kind of defeats the purpose of using hydrogen as a clean energy source. That's where green hydrogen comes in. Green hydrogen refers to hydrogen that is produced using renewable energy sources and methods that don't generate any greenhouse gas emissions. It's the creme de la creme of hydrogen production, and it's what we'll be focusing on in this series. So, how exactly do we produce green hydrogen? Well, that's where biological fermentation and electrolysis come in. These two methods are at the forefront of green hydrogen production, and they each have their own unique advantages and challenges. First up, let's dive into the world of biological green hydrogen, also known as biohydrogen. This method harnesses the power of nature's tiniest workers, microorganisms like algae and bacteria. These little guys have an incredible ability to produce hydrogen as a byproduct of their metabolic processes, through a process called anaerobic digestion. Basically, they can break down organic matter in the absence of oxygen, and voila, hydrogen is born. One of the most promising microorganisms for biohydrogen production is a type of algae called Chlamydomonas reinhardt. This single-celled alga is like a tiny hydrogen factory. When deprived of sulfur, it shifts its metabolism into high gear and starts producing hydrogen as a way to survive. It's like it's saying, no sulfur? No problem. I'll just make some hydrogen instead. This process is known as biophotolysis, and it's been the subject of extensive research in recent years. But algae aren't the only ones in the biohydrogen game. Certain types of anaerobic bacteria, like Clostridium and Thermotoga species, can also ferment a wide range of organic substrates, including sugars, and produce hydrogen as a byproduct. These bacteria are like the ultimate multitaskers, they can break down organic waste and create clean energy at the same time. It's a beautiful thing. And that brings us to one of the coolest things about biological green hydrogen production. It can utilize organic waste streams that would otherwise end up in landfills. Think about it, we have all this organic waste, like agricultural residues, food waste, and even wastewater, that's just sitting there, taking up space and generating methane, a potent greenhouse gas. But with biohydrogen production, we can take that waste and turn it into something valuable, clean energy. It's not just a theoretical concept, either. Researchers and companies around the world are already exploring ways to scale up biohydrogen production using various organic waste streams. For example, some are looking at using agricultural residues like corn stalks and wheat straw, while others are focusing on food waste from restaurants and grocery stores. The possibilities are endless, and the potential impact is huge. But of course, like any new technology, biohydrogen production faces its share of challenges. One of the biggest hurdles is the relatively low yield of hydrogen compared to other production methods. Algae and bacteria can only produce so much hydrogen, 
and we need to find ways to optimize the process to make it more efficient and cost-effective. There are also challenges related to scaling up production, such as finding the right balance of nutrients and environmental conditions to keep the microorganisms happy and productive. Despite these challenges, the future of biohydrogen looks bright. As we continue to research and develop new techniques and technologies, we can expect to see biohydrogen production become more efficient, more scalable, and more widely adopted. And that's an exciting prospect for anyone who cares about clean energy and sustainability. Now, let's switch gears and talk about the other method of green hydrogen production, electrolysis. Electrolysis green hydrogen involves splitting water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen using electricity generated from renewable sources, like solar, wind, or hydropower. It's a tried and true method that has been around for decades, but it's only recently that it's started to gain traction as a viable option for green hydrogen production. The concept of electrolysis happens in a device called an electrolyzer. An electrolyzer consists of an anode, a cathode, and an electrolyte. When an electric current is applied to the electrolyzer, it splits the water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen gas is collected at the cathode, while the oxygen gas is produced at the anode. It's a simple process, but it requires a lot of energy to make it happen. There are three main types of electrolyzers used for green hydrogen production. Alkaline electrolyzers, polymer electrolyte membrane, PEM, electrolyzers, and solid oxide electrolyzers. Each type has its own unique advantages and characteristics. For example, alkaline electrolyzers are the most mature and widely used type, but they tend to be less efficient than PEM electrolyzers. PEM electrolyzers, on the other hand, are more compact and can produce hydrogen at higher purities, but they are also more expensive. Solid oxide electrolyzers are the least mature of the three, but they have the potential to be the most efficient in the long run. Regardless of the type of electrolyzer used, the key to making electrolysis green hydrogen truly green is to use renewable electricity sources. After all, if we're using electricity generated from fossil fuels to produce hydrogen, we're not really solving the problem of greenhouse gas emissions. That's why it's so important to couple electrolysis with renewable energy sources like solar, wind, and hydropower. One of the biggest advantages of electrolysis green hydrogen is that it can be produced on site, right where it's needed. This is a big deal because it eliminates the need for long distance transportation of hydrogen, which can be expensive and logistically challenging. With on site electrolysis, hydrogen can be produced and used locally, whether it's for transportation, heating, or industrial processes. Another advantage of electrolysis green hydrogen is that it can help balance the electric grid. You see, renewable energy sources like solar and wind are intermittent, they only produce electricity when the sun is shining or the wind is blowing. This can create challenges for grid operators who need to match electricity supply with demand. But with electrolysis, we can use excess renewable electricity to produce hydrogen, which can then be stored and used later when electricity demand is high. It's like a giant, green battery that helps keep the grid stable and reliable. Of course, electrolysis green hydrogen also faces its share of challenges. One of the biggest challenges is the cost of production. Electrolyzers are expensive, and the cost of renewable electricity can also be high, especially in areas where renewable energy infrastructure is still developing. There are also challenges related to the efficiency of electrolyzers, particularly when it comes to scaling up production to meet the growing demand for green hydrogen. But despite these challenges, the future of electrolysis green hydrogen looks bright. As the cost of renewable electricity continues to fall and electrolyzer technology continues to improve, we can expect to see electrolysis become an increasingly competitive option for green hydrogen production. And with the growing demand for clean energy solutions, the market for electrolysis green hydrogen is only going to get bigger and bigger. So there you have it, folks, a deep dive into the world of green hydrogen production with a focus on biological fermentation and electrolysis. As we've seen, both methods have their own unique advantages and challenges, but they both have the potential to play a big role in the transition to a clean energy future. Of course, this is just the beginning of our journey into the world of green hydrogen. In the coming episodes of this series, we'll be exploring each of these methods in more detail, looking at the latest research and development. We'll also be exploring some of the key applications of green hydrogen, from transportation to heating to industrial processes. So if you're as excited about the potential of green hydrogen as we are, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single installment of this series. And if you have any questions or comments about green hydrogen production, let us know in the comments below, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep exploring the exciting world of renewable energy with us here at ReneeEnergy.com. Remember, 
every step we take towards a cleaner, more sustainable energy future is a step in the right direction. Together, we can build a brighter, greener tomorrow for ourselves and for generations to come. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for tuning into the ReneeEnergy.com YouTube channel. We trust you found this episode enlightening and motivating. There's a world of innovation and opportunity in sustainable energy, and we're delighted to share this journey with you. Stay in the loop with the latest on renewable energy and sustainability by visiting our website and subscribing to our newsletter. Your support is immensely appreciated, it's truly invaluable to us. Don't miss our next video on new trends in renewable energy. Follow us on social media for the latest updates. Enjoyed the video? Like, subscribe, and share for more green insights. Thanks for watching.